Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Uh, today, gonna be a match between Stork and Queen here on Cross Game. Top right, gonna be Stork, our red Protoss player, and in the bottom left, gonna be a white Zerg. It is Queen. Queen is such an excellent, excellent Zerg player, and Stork is terrifying as a Protoss player. I cast a game. On this map for a Patreon game of mine at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. It was Soxry versus let's see, who was the Who was the Protoss? I think it was Snow. So Soxry versus Snow. And it was an excellent PBT, so I hope this one lives up to it as well. Alright, man. So probe moving out on cross game here. It's a weird map, right? Wide ramp. Leading up to your natural base, and then a ramp leading down to your base, your main base, with a narrow ramp. So, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what the map maker was trying to accomplish. But hey, it's a Kakaru. Mineral expansion. It's a third base. That's minerals only. We've got a fourth base. And a fifth base featuring Vespine gas. And mm, expansions all around the edges here. And a lot of wide ramps. Good for Dragoons and good for Lurkers. Probe says, oh, okay. Overpool timing. <laughs> on the other side, Protoss is, was considering going for an Exus first play that is kind of on the table here, but instead it looks like we're gonna go for a Forge. Yep, gonna go for the forge to be safe depending on how many lings pop out of these larvae once the spawning pool is done. You know how this is all done, right? Right, yeah, definitely do. Overlord scouting across, more Overlord scouting across. But this one is a special one because his name is Terry. Terry the Overlord. That's right, man. What are we looking at here? Oh, pylon block. But it gets cancelled, and then expansion timing here for Queen is not too bad, honestly. Not bad at all. So two Lings are out, no real pressure going to be thrown at here at Stork. And I kind of feel like maybe this is a good map for Ling pressure, because look how wide this is. Actually, I think this is part of your wall. This little, like, what is this thing? This alien life, is this some kind of a flower? It looks like a crashed spaceship, kind of, but also like an overlord corpse a little bit. Is that what this is? God, this map is weird, man. Cross game. Weird, weird stuff. Again, this is a replay sent to me by RJB of RJB TV fame. Very excited to see what's going to go on in this one because RJB does not send me the bad ones. The bad ones at all. Third hatch coming up from the Zerg. Pretty standard timing considering it is a Forge Expand timing. Zergling gets out with its life. They both get out with their lives. Very, very injured indeed. Yeah, and so far so good. Pretty standard PVZ. There's a bit of a pylon block at the natural base of Queen, but that got canceled instead of, you know, a really oh, a solid committal there. Probes and Scouting Around says, okay, so yeah, definitely looks like you're going for the lair timing before the metabolic boost, as is tradition these days. First gas getting taken here by Stork at about 3.30. Nothing too crazy there. Second base up, one cannon. And that's it. Not really worried about making any zealots or anything because there's no probes, or rather no lings running around except for the ones that were previously injured and kind of... They don't have speed. They're not getting joined by friends at all. <laughs> incredible. Trey, incredible stuff here. All right, so nothing crazy happening, I gotta say, but thanks to everybody who does hit the like button on these casts. It is a nice free way to support me here on YouTube, as well as leaving a comment. I read every comment anybody ever makes on the channel. As you probably know by now, but if you're a newcomer, ask someone who's been here for a while, and they will tell you the same. Mwahaha. <laughs> These are the two. Just two Zerglings. Just two Zerglings here from Queen. That's all he has made today. Stargate coming up. Lair into Spire. Yep. Ooh. And the probe got killed behind the minimap for privacy. <laughs> and to avoid a rated R rating here. From the uh, MPAA in the United States. <laughs> so Zealot comes at the third base, tries to get something done, doesn't have any kills. This is gonna be annoying. This is what this is. 
Like, as far as Zerg is concerned, this is annoying. I like this. A lot of Zerg players are like, uh, I don't wanna. I have to use perfect mic or I don't lose any lings. And Queen's like, whatever, just get out of here, nerd. Just get out of here. What is that button that brings everything back? I don't think I know what that hotkey is. Wow. Can I right click on this name and get a camera view? No, you can do that in live games. If you right click on a player's name that you're casting live, you can see what their where their camera is at any given time. It's actually kind of nice. Anyway, Citadel of a Dune coming in from the Protoss. Not to do crazy there at all. Macro hatch on the way from Queen. Loving that. Loving that. Ooh, and it's an air weapons upgrade game, which means we're going to get more Corsairs than just the one or two. One or two traditionally. Boom, boom, chicka. Boom. Handful of lings out of the front door. They were made to deal with the Zealot. Now there's not much for them to do. I guess they can prevent a pro from just going out and trying to take it third base without any escort whatsoever. Uh, Overlord, well, this is Terry, right? I don't think this is Terry, but he's getting spared anyway. This Corsair might be more interested in scouting things out than going in murdering overlords. Hmm. Hatch, hatch. Hydralisk Den, everything is just macro style here for Queen. Yeah, nothing crazy here whatsoever. Just Corsair pumping, Zealots here, Zealot Legs getting researched soon. Although, I don't know, it's Quick Templar Archives. Is this DTs? Is this a Corsair DT-ish kind of a play? What are we making here? What are we making? Come on, come on, it is a DT. Okay, so one DT on the way. Loving that. We'll see if Queen goes into the Mutalisk player or this Spire is just for, you know, just for the Scourge. Just to protect our overlords from the Corsairs with Scourge. Seems to be that's the case. We're really sinking ooh, into faster overlord movement, into faster hider movement, into evolution chambers type stuff here. Out of Queen. Both players' APMs started around 500. They've settled down to sub 300, although Stork's at 290 and Queen's at 230 right now. But still, both playing plenty fast. Plenty fast faux show. Meanwhile, another gateway coming in. More DTs? Yeah, more DTs on the way. This guy's moving out. Look how he camouflages on the red lava with his red cape. Smart. Smart choice here from Stork. Hard to see this guy, even if you can see him. Sneak, 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 sneak. So, gonna try to sneak on in here. There's overlords, there's hiders, there's lings. This base is not vulnerable at all. Wow. So, this DT is dead. Uh, oh, these, these lings don't decide to come back home. Oh, they did decide to come back home, but now it's too late. Oh, there was a window that could have got us around on that guy. Are there overlords? Yeah, overlords sunken and everything dealing with DTs is ready to go up both the second base and the third base here. So everything is just fine. Thank you. This DT sharking around the front door trying to find lings that are parking up on his lawn. Alright, that DT gets chased down and killed thanks to the overlord's speed. Nicely done on the assist there. Storm getting researched from Stork. He does like to go for drops. We might see some of that in this game, but so far, just gateways, really. Gateways, Corsairs, Lurker Aspect coming on in here for Queen, too. And so far, so good, honestly. Both players looking fine. No real damage has been dealt. I mean, this Corsair ball is a little bit scary with six of them. But the Hydra count is all right. I don't know, actually, it's only four Hydras. So do you want to jump in here? No, not really. Not with Hydras on the ground. The Corsairs don't want to take too much damage at all. But they're scouting, too. They're trying to see how many Hydras are out. And it's a lot. There's a lot of Hydras being produced here. Lurker Aspect coming in. Going for Dragoon range. Because he says, okay, this is going to be a lot of Hydra Lurker. Dragoons are going to be really good in this situation. Not going to be any Mutalisks. I don't see any real fast... I'm trying to get into Hive Tech here or anything like that. Overlords... Oh, staying alive. Really nice Hydra micro here. Out of Queen. Truly fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. Like, is anything weird happening in this game? Not really. Corsair is not getting any Overlord kills for the first nine minutes is definitely odd. That's not something we see a lot. There's your hive timing from Queen here at about nine and a half. And the Lurkers are out in a defensive position. Potentially a fourth base check up here. But where's the third? I think he's checking to see... Oh, Ling's like, where's the third? Ling's like, where's the third? 
Ling's like, where's the third? Ling's like, where's the third? I like the Ling spread. Because Stork is not taking a third base here at all. And it seems like maybe it's a bit of a problem. Hydra, Skirt. Okay, one Corsair dies to Skirt. Another one gets picked up by Hydra's. That was pretty good. Knocking the Corsair count down to four. No more iron production. Finally, Zealot Legs is getting researched. And a, uh, Robo is getting produced here too. Rather, getting warped in. Fourth base coming up top left here from Queen. Yeah, and I mean, so far, I just, I'm just just trying to figure out who's ahead here. I mean, Queen, just for the mere fact, he hasn't lost a base yet, really. He hasn't lost any drones at all. That's his first Overlord to go down, I think. Maybe the second one. And Hydra's pushing up, but guess who has Storm? That's right, Stork does, but it's all up here. <gasps> the Storm is in the wrong position. Oh, no! Dude, this base is dead. Dude, if he just focuses, yeah, focus the Nexus, force a cancel there and get out. I think that's genius by Queen. He's like, well, there was no storm preventing me from walking in here and taking down your Nexus, so neat. <laughs> and he backs out. <laughs> Zealot attacking this fourth base, but Ling's just trying to prevent him from getting any real damage done there. Adrenal lands on the way here to love to see that. Hydra is trying to jump in, but sees the number of High Templar and backs out very intelligently. Zealot attack! Burrow the... Okay, so the Lurkers burrow in. Is that enough to prevent these Zealots from trying to focus down this hatchery? The answer seems to be not really. Although, maybe it should be. Ugh, the Lings... Okay, so the Lings are going to help save it here, too. Zealot down, Zealot down, Zealot down. This hatchery is going to be very low on HP. But that's it, man. Everything is toast. Ling Hydra, it's 128 to 143 supply, a fine place for Queen to be right now. The Storms have to be really good for Stork to hang on here, but, you know, it's Stork, so they will be. Absolutely, bit of a Zealot run by here, too, as Queen gets repelled from attacking into this third base again. Zealot, check to see if there's a base here. There's not, but there are some Lurkers, thank you. And then maybe heading down to the south to check to see if there's a base down here, too. Or just, I don't know, heading out and hanging out in no man's land right now. This DT is just getting some free hacks off. The Lings have Adrenal now, and that is problematic for these Zealots. Oh, but coming around the backside, it's a big attack. Stork says, I'm tired of defending. Let's move out. Let's move out with most of what we've got. Corsair down. Ba -da -ba. And everything, yeah, like I said, there's been some damage here and there. The cancellation on the third base from Stork was a temporary setback. But this is just pretty standard stuff so far. Plague's on the way. That's going to be a game changer. Obviously, we're at the stage of the game where there's a lot of Dragoons and Zealots out. Plague's going to be awesome. Probably better than Dark Swarm is against this more Zealot-heavy composition of Storks. So we're just... The Zerg player Queen is trying to just hold a really fine line here between macro and tech. I'm trying to make sure he gets Plague up, but this attack is going to have to be done without Plague. Ah, uh, Nidus is here. Dark Swarm is up because that's all we can do right now. Plague is not researched. The Nidus Canal is alive with 8 HP. Good storms on those lurkers. Big attack coming up this ramp. These lurkers are not burrowing. Queen, no. Queen, get your lurkers in there and burrow. So he burrows outside of the Dark Swarm. That's better than nothing. Instantly eats a storm and gets picked out of the ground. More desperation attacks coming in. Are the, oh, the Zealots are going to be going after these drones and then maybe take down that hatchery too. This is a really strong timing attack. Out of Stork and the hatchery goes down to the Dragoons. So it knocks Queen back to a three basing Zerg. Whew. This is absolutely amazing stuff here. Ling's rolling in. They've got their Adrenal. they got plus one attack. 
They're very mean to these Dragoons. They've got plus two attack and no other armor upgrades. So they're just getting eaten and chomped up here, but then reinforcing Zealots join the party and the Lings have to get on out. Replacing the fourth base is Queen a little bit later than maybe he could have, but that's okay. Dude, fourth base coming in here from Stork 2. Stork's looking good. That attack was awesome. There was no Plague available. There was barely any Dark Swarm available, too. Storm was there. Good positioning on the ramp. Lings couldn't get a full surround on this thing. There really wasn't a ton of Hydra or Lurker anywhere. Gonna try to do a bit of a Ling run by counterattack here by Queen, but uh-uh. There's too much. There's too much Protoss here for that to happen. Yeah, these Lings are just kind of sacrificing themselves, so they decide to back on out. Maybe they can run up into this third base, but... There's cannons there. There's not enough links to deal with three cannons. And Zealots pushing in as we get a fifth base coming up here at the Minerals only for Queen. Not a bad not a bad base to take here. You're going to want a lot of links, right? Once they have the Adrenal, which they do, once they have plus two attack and plus three attack, a lot of links are going to be necessary, and therefore these Minerals will be too. But the gas is kind of the big thing here for the Zerg player for sure. I'm going to want a lot of Lurkers. Gonna want a lot of defilers, a lot of hiders. All these things are pretty gas intensive. We'll see. Like I said, I think Stork's just ahead. He's got this fourth base rolling, but he's kind of letting Queen crawl back into this thing by taking his fourth back and getting a fifth base of his own. Overlord says, I guess I'll scout this area. Oh, wait, I'll just die to cannons. No! Got pushed back into safety. That's nice. Ah, free Defiler! God, ah, Defiler dies. Did, oh, did get a plague off on somehow... Oh, I guess some of these Dragoons catch it too. It's hard to see the plague on these red Protoss units for sure. Dark Swarm is up and Stork charges into that thing. He's up 169 to 131 supply. He's not all that worried about it. Great Storm on those Lings. This is such a good push from Stork again, but also mm, Ling's trying to get up this ramp into the fourth base of Storks, but guess what's there? Zealots and Psionic Storm, but guess who's still here? Some Lings that maybe could have run up there, but they decided not to. Maybe a Dark Swarm would have been good. However, Stork is getting rebuffed from this other location, too. Lurker wanders in here, gets focused down and killed. That was some seriously iffy micro there from Queen, but forcing the Protoss player back is good. Beautiful hold here from Stork. Absolutely insanely impressive hold there. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. All right, more DTs coming in. Working on that plus three melee attack I was talking about earlier for these Lings. They really start to be very cost efficient. As long as you're not taking Reaver shots to the face, as long as you're not taking High, te uh, high Templar Storms right to the face either here. Yeah? Yeah. 182 to 128 supply. Mmm. Mmm. This is looking really bad for the Zerg. He's going to need some sick Dark Swarms and sick Plagues. All this consume is happening to prepare for this very thing. So he sees this, but does he have enough to handle this attack coming all the way up to his fourth base? Ah, Dark Swarms up. The Zealot count is pretty solid. <laughs> when the attack gets killed, there's a million uh, Lurkers up here, so this Zealot attack doesn't do anything. I like this play. Stork trying to take this 12 o'clock base while kind of containing the Zerg player and making sure he can't really go beyond the five bases that he's on right now. That is definitely a winning strategy. And I snipe on that OBS. Oh, and Stork's like, uh-oh. The OBS is gone. That was a mistake by me. I'm going to storm some drones over here. Oh, these Lings. They just... Ze one Zealot died, and there was like 17 Lings in there. That is not fair trades at all. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't know. Queen's holding, but this base is really huge for Stork right now. Like, insanely big for Stork. I, is that going to work out? I mean, he's got map control. Queen hasn't really tried to move out for two or three or four minutes now. Man, Sunken Lurker Ling is a pretty solid defense against Zealot run buys. It's a pretty solid defense against a lot of things, except for like a ton of Dragoons. 
Uh, and then that's what the Dark Swarm is for. So, okay, this is going all right. Ooh, drops? Hey, you know how Falcon feels about drops. This is what we're here for. Drops, drops, gonna head up this right side. However, this did get spotted by, I think, this Zealot. So there's Zealots waiting for this. <laughs> so the overlords are like, oh, never mind. We're not going that way. Coming up this ramp seems like a terrible plan, too. Yeah, big engagement over on this left side, kind of. Stork poking in doesn't work. Ah, Dark Swarm Ling attack. Where's the High Templar? Where are the Reavers? This is not a good thing for Stork at all, but his army is in the neighborhood. They can come back and generally save this. But the Nexus is getting focused down. These are plus two attack Adrenal Wings. And they get it. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, 100 HP remaining on that thing. You sneeze on it. It's going to fall over. Queen maybe trying to expand down this way. Ling's leading the way. Really wants this Nexus bad. Bunch of Ling's just getting produced here. Running down. It is 183 to 149 supply. Maybe going for that drop. But again, these Zealots are just parked. They're waiting. They're just trying to see, you know, when you come in here, we'll be ready for you, friendo. Plus three attack, plus one armor on the gateway units. The Lings are now 3-3. They are full cracklings. As that Archon... Oh, they got the Nexus. Stork! No, Stork left his post. He lost it. Oh, this is bad. This is bad news bears for Stork all of a sudden. This is getting dicey. Reavers are starting to come out. Oh, that one took some good hits, though, didn't it? Down to 32 HP, not ideal. So this is where if Queen can expand after denying this base, he's in a pretty good spot. But no, Stork says absolutely not. You're not coming down here. Not even close. Overlord's continuing to be like, hey, you know, these zealots might be needed somewhere else. And Stork's like, nope. They're on guard duty. This is all they're going to do for the rest of this game is sit here on this base and make sure it doesn't get sniped by some kind of crazy ling drop with Dark Swarm. That's it. That's your entire job here. This Dragoon's like, stop hanging out over here. I can see you. Stop it. So we unload some lings to chase the Dragoon away. This is fun. And another attack by Stork is kind of aborted. He's just... He's been intending to get up here. My goodness gracious. My goodness to gracious. More Reavers on the way. Kindness Plating coming in, so maybe some Ultralisks in the future here. He's got all the upgrades for him. Might as well make some. I mean, the Lurkers got three... Got their three armor. Where are some Hydralisks? It's all Lurkers, isn't it? Not a ton of anti-air here. <laughs> Not a ton of anti-air. It's 3-1. He's working on additional missile attack upgrades. But seriously, if Queen could take this, he'd be in a much better position. He's sure he wiped out this 12 o'clock of Storks, but it's coming back. And it's warping in now, baby. Yeah, Lurker's not great against Archons, but hey, an Archon just died to a Lurker and died itself in return, so whatever. Yeah, this is kind of turning into a bit of a low econ play, isn't it? Queen's floating a bunch of cash. He could just dump this into, like, 10 ultras? Almost 10 ultras? Oh, the expansion. Look at this DT. He's like, I'm going to wait for you to finish and then kill you. How's that sound? Play go. <laughs> oh, that Ling takes down a Dragoon. Pretty good engagement here for Queen. Still 174 to 137 supply. I'm not going to say that Queen can't win this game because that is definitely untrue. I mean, this is... Queen's holding on, hasn't lost a base yet. Which is... A, he's getting free Archon kills out here in the middle of the map too, which is pretty awesome. So, I mean, he's making some good trades and he keeps pushing this attack of Storks back and back and back and back. Anabolic Synthesis on the way. There you go! 10 Ultras! Hey, it's 11 Ultralisks! What did I say? What did I tell you was going to happen here? This DT is on hold position. Because he would walk over here and he's killing drones that come between him and the hatch anyway. <laughs> Alright, man. 13 Ultras ready to rock. It takes me back to when I attended the launch of the Heart of the Swarm expansion for StarCraft 2. 
and there was a show match between, I forget who the players were, but it was like 2012, so it was, you know, a good 10 years ago. But uh, they, one of the players, the Zerg player, made like eight ultras at once, and I was just like, eight ultras at once! It's like falling over myself in ecstasy. Anyway, this DT has been an no, no, he's got nine kills? 10, 11, 12! He's dead now, that's insane. So here goes Queen, he's now maxed out with his 11 ultras that he produced at one time, fully upgraded, strong boys. Here we go, it's gonna come down to some kind of an engagement right here. Here we, I mean, I'm waiting for this to go. There it is. So here come the ultras from the right side and the left side. Great engagement. Archons fighting. Dark Swarm is up for what it means, but wow, those Archons got obliterated. These High Temple are backed into a corner. Oh, Storm does take down that Ultra list. It's 167 to 145 supply. Queen has a lead for maybe the first time in this game overall. This Archon dies, and this High Templar going to pay for his crimes too. The Observer's not because Ultras can't do anything about that. These Zealots have been plagued, which makes them much easier to munch up for these Ultra Lisks, and maybe they can move into this base now. If they could kill this base, a one Dark Swarm or right here would be enough for this to happen. And by golly, Stork, a lot of his army's up here. He's Reavers. He's almost kind of turtling up here too. My goodness to gracious. Is he going to go up this ramp? Where's the Defiler at? There's a Defiler in this group. There's not a Defiler in this group. I don't feel as good about this, but I guess you're dealing with a Zealot Storm combination, so Dark Swarm's not going to matter all that much here. Let's toss it down anyway. Let's get a plague. Oh, you plagued your own Ultras, though. God, is it even worth it to try to plague the Zealots if you catch your own, old, old, own Ultras in the mix, too? I don't know that it is. 175 to 116 supply. Dude, surprise Ultras here. From Queen, not a move we see a lot of, but he was able to hold on enough with just kind of a ragtag Ling Hydra Lurker Defiler kind of a setup that he started floating a bunch of cash and was like, you know what? I think I feel safe enough to do this. And the Ultras are just so good against a Protoss that doesn't have a ton of Reavers out or a ton of Archons. Alive. So is that it? That just completely flipped this game on its head. This Ultralisk attack into the natural base, into the main. There's Reavers at this ramp. This is one of the situations where the narrow ramp leading into your main is actually pretty nice. It's when your enemy has an Ultra Ling army and they wanted to get into your main base from your natural. <laughs> but I don't think he needs to go in there. He just, this is mined out. So I mean, go kill this and maybe just get the GG. Yeah, 163 to 130 supply income. This new source of income for Queen is really important. And he's taking the base that hasn't been attempted to be taken yet. So this is going to be a tough nut to crack. There's High Templar, DTs, Cannons, and three Reavers in here. Uh, trying to do this without any Dark Swarm seems like a really stupid idea. So Queen says, never mind. That is a really stupid idea. <laughs> DTs. Ah! They were doing great up until, you know, they were detected. That's kind of the story of the DT, isn't it? 143 to 132 supply. Can Stork salvage this? He's only got the one base mining right now, and this is technically Queen Zon 2 with a good potential for three here as well. Plus, he needs to worry about this. Ling's on top of the Reavers. One Reaver dies. No, no, he saves himself, but then he goes down anyway. The Reavers die. That's a huge deal. DT is getting some big swings in. There are no overlords here from Queen. He kills everything that's on the ground except for the DTs pretty darn easily. And then the DTs are hacking away. Where's your dearest overlord? You crazy Zerg. He's bringing one over. It's like, well, all I need is one. High Templar down, 166 to 110 supply. The DTs did what they could, but I don't know. I mean, I really feel like 
the queen's probably just going to allow this base to happen. <laughs> going to do his best to make that happen. And while queen is holding on to this base and this base and this base, which you've already looked at, right? DT does wander into this minerals only fifth base, whatever it was from queen. Wow. Gets an absolute complete multi-kill on this entire mineral line. Dude's got 12 kills. That's huge. Okay. Well, I don't know if this is the right idea for queen, but he's going for it anyway. God, these reavers are just sitting back shooting fish in a barrel right now. Uh, the reavers, all three of them are still alive. The ultras can't quite get to all of them. The shuttle is bringing them and shuttling them back and forth to positions where the ultras can't attack them at all. Meanwhile, DTs are attacking this base and this base. Dude! No, Queen! I don't know if he threw this game or not, but I think this is a really poor life choice for him. Ah, oh, really bad. Really, really bad stuff here. Is it enough, though? Queen's at 96 supply. Stork's at 83. <laughs> this Reaver, though... Okay, so the Nexus dies. There are no new source of income for the Protoss, but at what cost? At what cost? I think he wins. I think he wins here. Couple Zealots wandering into Sunken Ultralisk land. Oh, there's more Zealots, and there's DTs here too. This is, uh, this is getting dicey all of a sudden. The shuttle doesn't have the speed upgrade. Why would you not have the speed upgrade? I guess you're spending on other stuff. Well, that hatch is gonna die, and this hatch is dead, but holy smokes, this this is like the third, fourth base? And this is the fifth base, so income versus no income is always gonna win in a game of StarCraft. But by golly, Stork is giving it the old college try, trying to stay alive here. This Ultra really should not be involved in this battle. The Reaver has got only six kills. I thought for sure this Reaver would have more than six kills. Well, it died with six kills. That Ultra's got 43 HP. He dead. This Lurker casually... Oh, there's an OBS out now! <laughs> Defiler down. And that's it. Stork has left the game. Wow. GG to Queen. Ends the game with 79 supply. This base is dead. This base is dead. He's got some, you know, mining here and mining here. It's effectively a two-base thing, Zerg, at the end of the game. That is not ideal. Holy cow. Absolutely, truly, truly, incredibly knocked down, drag him out ZVP. And it all hinged on the 11 Ultras that were made all at once there, wasn't it? That was it. That was the play. God, truly, truly, truly amazing stuff there. At the end of the day, it was just good defense. Queen defended this base a bunch of times. He defended this a few times. This area was really important. Stork kept trying to push through it, and Queen was like, no, go away, go home. It's not like Queen had overwhelming forces here. He just had some plague and dark storm and some lurkers, and Stork was like, I really don't want to go in there at all, and then he didn't. And then he paid for it in the end, man, because Queen was amassing a fortune, made 11 ultras, and then just started smashing at that point. Well done. Absolutely well done stuff. Oh, where is my F10 key? What am I pressing? There we go. <laughs> Hit that like button if you enjoyed that one. 286,000 points there from Queen. 263 from Stork. Outproduced. Wow. A 10 to 3 outproduced ratio here from Queen. And a 7 to 3 kill death ratio is just not going to be enough. The math is not going to work out for us, is it? Resources. Did get outspent. Stork did by about... 8,000, 11,000, something, I don't know. Some kind of resources here. The math is falling apart in my head. Yeah, 8,000 resources. Which, in 32 minutes, enough. And if you have income at the end of the game and the Protoss player doesn't, then you pretty much are going to be a happy boy. Well done. Truly fantastic, fantastic display. That was a very, very, very well done game from Queen. 
Woof, and that's going to be it for me. This is Ben, Falcon Paladin, coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.